Hi and welcome to this lecture where I explain the projected unit credit method as arranged by IS19. And I will also show you the numerical example in Excel illustrating this method step by step, right? I am Sylvia of cpdbox.com. If you find this lecture useful, you can visit my website, download the Excel file coming with this lecture, and you can check out tons of free articles, videos, sign up to our free newsletter and learn international financial accounting with me. So projected unit credit method is required by IS19 employee benefits in accounting for defined benefit plans. I'm not going into details of defined benefit plans in this lecture. This is a very complex topic. Just let me focus on the method. Once you as the employer provide some employee benefit, and you classify it as a defined benefit plan, you need to apply this method to measure the present value of the defined benefit obligation and current service cost. Well, also past service cost, but let's focus on basics. So let me give you the illustration. Let's say you have the employee that has a contract for seven years from 20X1 to 20X7. And on top of his monthly salary, he will receive one time bonus at the end of this period in the amount of 300,000 currency units. And let's say this bonus is a motivation offered right in the employment contract and will be paid only at the end of the employment. So you classify this bonus as a defined benefit plan in its easiest form. Now, let me tell you what not to do. Do not accrue all amount in profit or loss in 20x7. Your employee earned this amount over seven years and not solely in the year 20x7. And the main principle is to recognize the cost in the period when the employee works. So over seven years. Now, another mistake you could do is to divide 300,000 by seven and recognize that amount in profit or loss each year. And that's also wrong. It's closer to the correct method, but it's still wrong because you're ignoring the time value of money and other assumptions. So what to do? Well, apply projected unit credit method as I will show you here. So imagine this is the employment timeline. First January 20X1 is the start. End of 20X7 is the end of employment and total bonus of 300,000 is earned over all this period. Imagine we are at the end of 20x2. It's now. So projected unit credit method measures present value of defined benefit obligation. And that is the amount accrued for that benefit from start till now, including some interest. And it also measures current service cost. And that is the amount accrued for that specific year that is in 20x2 in this case. And due to discounting, it will be different each year. So how to apply this method to measure all of this? Well, projected unit credit methods requires to gradually build the defined benefit obligation over the period of service where each year adds some part to that benefit. Also, each unit of that benefit is measured separately. That's to reflect the time value of money and other aspects. So current service cost is different each year, as you will see. Let me wrap that up and show you the calculations in Excel. So we have an employment contract for seven years from 1st January 20X1 till 31st December 20X7. There is a bonus paid a termination of 300,000 currency units. And this is, by the way, called the ultimate cost of benefit. And that's the amount to be actually paid to the employee when the time comes. We will apply discount rate of 2% and we will luckily ignore everything else here to make it totally simple. Before we start working, let me remind you, you have to classify your benefit first. We assume here that this is defined benefit plan, which it is. And if it's something else, then you do not apply this method, but go according to what it is. Standard IS-19 will tell you. So 
In this example, we already know the ultimate cost of benefit. That's 300,000 currency units. And sometimes it's not that clear because employer can promise to pay some amount depending on future salary. So let's say at the end of your employment, you will get 10 to 20 multiple of your annual salary, right? Depending on how long you have worked for the company. And that's why actuarial assumptions enter into calculations. But for now, our job is easier. First of all, we must spread this benefit over employees total service seven years, and we will do it in this simple table. In the first line, there are years, one for two O X one, etc. For each year of service, the ultimate cost of benefit accrued will be 300,000 divided by seven, which gives us 42,857 currency units. And we are attributing benefit equally to all periods of service in this case. So our total in this table represents the amount of benefit already earned in the current and previous periods. So until now, it's undiscounted. The amount earned for previous periods is simply total brought forward from prior year. And as you can see, total benefit at the end of final year of service, 7 or 20x7, is 300,000. So that's the benefit promised to this employee. The next step is to measure each unit separately by discounting it to the present value. So for doing so, we set up another table. And the first line represents the opening obligation as at the beginning of the current reporting period. So for the year 20x1, it's zero, of course, since our employee started to work in 20x1. And in the years to follow, opening obligation is simply the closing obligation from the previous reporting period. So opening obligation in the year 20x2 equals closing obligation from the year 20x1, etc. And then as we have opening obligation, we can calculate interest cost for the current reporting period to bring the obligation to its present value at the end of the reporting period. Interest cost is calculated as our discount rate, 2% in this example, multiplied with the opening obligation. That's very simplistic because we have no movements during the year here. Again, for the sake of simplicity. Except for interest cost, we shall also calculate current service cost. It's nothing else than one unit of benefit spread over full working period. That is 42,857 which is discounted by our discount rate to its present value. And in order to do discounting, we shall determine discount factor at 2% for each working year separately using this formula. This year parameter here means the number of years from now until the end. So if you're calculating the discount factor for 20x1, then the year parameter is 6, which is the number of years from the end of 20x1 till 20x7. I put it in the Excel formulas here. If you follow the link in the description, you can download this Excel file and see it yourself. If this extremely demanding topic comes up at the exam, I am positive that you will be given discount factors and I show you the Excel calculation to apply it in your job. Then it's time to multiply undiscounted unit of benefit, 42,857, with discount factor for the individual year. And thus we arrive to the current service cost for that year, right? So in the year 20x1, it is 38,056 currency units. Finally, let's sum this all up and get the closing obligation at, at the end of the current reporting period. It's calculated as opening obligation plus interest cost plus current service cost. And at the end of 20x1, the closing obligation represents just 38,056 since there was no opening obligation and no interest cost. Now, what you should do, you should copy all these formulas to the other columns in this table. So please make sure you use the correct formulas so they can be copied, right? Again, download this Excel file and see how I did that.
you could be inspired maybe. Maybe you can find out some better method. So as you can see in the following years, closing obligation gradually builds up as there are some interest costs and current service costs each year. So just look to the end of 2OX7, final year of employment. You can see that the present value of obligation is exactly 300,000 currency units, the amount to be paid to the employee. So let's take a look to journal entries. In each year, an increase in obligation caused by interest and in current service cost is debited in profit or loss account, expense for some employee benefits, and credited to liability from employee benefits. So you can see the total expense over seven years is 300,000. That's what you will pay out to your employee. And you can also see that you did not accrue the same amount each year because you applied projected unit credit method. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you wish to learn accounting with me, then please go to cpdbox.com, subscribe to our free newsletter, and please share this video with your friends if you liked it. Bye, and thanks for watching.